Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now, do you remember when BMW M division went nuts and put a V10 engine in a luxury sedan? That's exactly what happened with the E60 M5 that we have here. We have a V10 under the hood. Zero to 60 in the low four second range, top speed 190 miles per hour and completely unrestricted. This car, this sedan could reach 208 miles per hour. So what we're gonna do in this video is of course the bangle era of design so what has changed here from the e39 quite a lot and i'm going to let you know what i think about the e60 design from a front side rear interior and then we're going to do what this car was built for and that is take it for a drive Thanks to European Auto House for making this review possible. As the name suggests, they specialize in European cars and they have some really special cars for sale. Go check out the full inventory linked down in the description. Now listen, there is no denying that the E60 M5 was sort of an unreliable car. For example, the rod bearings would go at even low mileage examples, which would blow up the entire engine. That would be $35,000, $40,000 to replace the engine. Then you had the Vonos issues with the oil pump. That would also fail and that would be 7,000, something like that to replace. But disregarding all that and looking at this, if you get a sorted example of an E60 M5, I think it's a fantastic car even by today's standards because this is the only time the M5 came with a V10 engine. So let's start with the front end design of the E60 M5 and what makes this a lot different from the E39. This is the era of Chris Bangle. So Chris Bangle came in, he wanted to introduce a completely new design language for the 5 Series and he definitely did that with the E60 and the flame surfacing in the bangle butt in the rear which we're gonna have a look at in just a second. So I think this is a pretty cool interpretation or modernization and uh, Revolu uh, revolution of the E39 M5, it got a lot more fluid, a lot more organic in all of these design features. Everything got a lot more rounded as well. And to me, this car looks almost a bit more South Korean in its design philosophy than German. So for example, let's have a look at this lower intakes right here. Positioning of the intakes is very similar to what we had in the E39 M5, but as you can see, it's got a lot more rounded. And one detail I love about the front end of this is the kind of evolution of these corner splitters that we have on the E39. Here, they're super sharp and they kind of cut off here in a very abrupt way. But I think it gives the front fascia a very unique look, even though it feels like this front lip should continue under the main intake in the lower part. And we also have this line here cutting into the bumper line with this little line here. I like that it doesn't just cut off here and ends. This top line continues and have this line going into the side of the bumper as well. Now overall, if I were to compare this in one word compared to the E39, is that this became a little bit more feminine. For example, have a look at the headlights here stretching up all the way on top of the hood almost the side of the fender creating almost the angel eyes right here but with an eyelash at the top and also this lower part a lot more fluid one detail i love about the hood design on the e60 is that we have this chamfer cutting through from the windshield going all the way down and then frames the grill and the graphics in the front i really like this treatment of the hood and it adds a little bit more styling features to the E60 M5 compared to the pretty static but very classy looking E39. Comparing the side view to the front and the rear of the E60, I think this is a lot less stylized than we have specifically when we look at the front end. It still has this very sharp shoulder line right here. You have the Hofmeister King intact in this and then you have the trunk. This is the bangle butt line right here. You have the trunk line cutting from the rear and then kind of going into the C-pillar here and continuing into this door frame. So these are lines that we don't have on the E39 that is specific for the bangle type of design philosophy. I also love these wheels. Again, as I said with the E39 M5 review, these are the wheels that kind of fits this car that needs to be on this car. These are not wheels that I would switch out. And they also grew by one inch compared to the E39 so we have 19s front and back. You can see this lower part of the side as well. You have this ground effect side skirt, not too aggressive, still very subtle, and it reminds me of the rest of the flame surfacing BMWs of this era. This side treatment of the surfacing overall has a lot of flame surfacing in it. And then we have this line going from around the bumper into the side of the bumper through the rear axle, and then this line actually continues and connects 
with the line that I talked about from the side intake in the front, they sit in the exact same height in the back going into the front end. A couple of details in the side view that we cannot skip on the E60 M5 is of course this air vent that we have in the fender. So we have these two chrome strips, trim pieces with the M5 logo in the middle and this is actually functional. I think it's still pretty subtle so it doesn't stick out too much in the overall design of the car looking really clean. And then we have the side mirrors here as well. Very M-like shape, a lot more organic which is the sort of trademark for the M side mirrors to have them be more round these days we have this little spoke sticking out here but still in 2004 when this model came out they still had the very organic round shapes of the side mirrors I think it looks absolutely fantastic moving around to the rear end of the E60 M5 I love this view I'm gonna say it again the three-quarter rear view is gonna be my favorite for the E60 as well what I love about this is if you look at the E39 this is a very cool modernization of the E39 just like we have in the front end for example we still have the shoulder line here cutting into the taillights which now wrap around a lot more around the corner than they did on the E39 but they still wrap in to the taillight and create the same separation as we have in the E39 meaning that the shoulder line now cuts into the taillights and separates the indicator light from the rest of the taillight and we even have this line intact. The, the designers of the E60 didn't have to put this in here but they decided to do that and I like to think of it as an homage to the E39 because that also has this line in the trunk. Now going down further down we have the same kind of treatment like we have in the front end here. We have these wings or corner out, corner spoilers in the corners of the, of the rear end just like we have in the front. You can see that these are also cut off very abruptly here in the middle. Same treatment again that we have in the front end. And these are not the stock pipes even though they are quad bazooka tailpipes in this case. These are the Akrapovich aftermarket exhaust for this specific M5. They look absolutely beefy. Again, there is no really massive diffuser in the rear. And that's what I like about this generation E60 and the E39 is they're so subtle and these today's M5s feel like they put more effort into adding wings and spoilers and fins onto the car while the E60 is the last M5 in my opinion that still has this classy elegant look like the normal E60 had just with some subtle touches to make it different and make it into an M5. One detail about these taillights is first of all I just noticed that it has this interesting cut in it or chamfer going in the red part of the taillight. I've never noticed that before on the E60 but I've always wondered what if we continue this line and reduced this angle bringing it down a little bit almost horizontal like the E39. I th I'm gonna keep coming back to the E39 because I think it's such a beautiful car. I would wonder what it would look like if we just brought this taillight down a little bit. This is the classic bangle era of design with the bangle butt in the rear and a lot more organic feeling as I said it feels almost South Korean so I want to experiment with that and see what that could look like but again if you do that in the rear it kind of doesn't work with the front headlights that stick so far up on the fender and on the hood in the front end. Welcome to the interior of the E60 M5 and I just reviewed the E39 right before I filmed this car and what a difference this is to the design of the E39. It's not bad at all but it's just very different. For example same kind of styling that we have in the outside. Very fluid organic design. I love that we have two proper I mean look at how deep in this infotainment screen sits underneath this housing. You're not going to have any problems with glare for example not for the gauge cluster or the infotainment screen. The vents are still very easily accessible right here in the middle. We still have the same kind of trim like we have in the E39 M5 with this almost white wood trim which I really like. You can take it for white wood or it could even look like brushed aluminum right here. You have the same treatment down here in the center console. You might wonder where are the cup holders? This is a 2006 model. Definitely should have cup holders and they do exist. They're just hidden right here. So this is a driver cup holder and comes out and angles toward the driver. I really like the engineering of these things. And here you have the passenger side uh, cup holder going straight out to the passenger. In the center console you have this very small storage compartment and it, the funny thing is this is like a double storage. You have one smaller compartment inside of the bigger one. So it takes up a little bit of extra space in there and removes uh, all the storage you could have. It was just a simple empty compartment and of course you have a beefy big glove box in the E60 M5. But who cares about the interior features of the E60? What we want to know is how does it sound? 
specifically with the V10 up front and the Akrapovich exhaust in the rear. So, of course, let's fire it up and let's listen to this beauty. One interesting detail in the gauge cluster is that the red line, just as in the E39 M5, is variable. But this, it feels like almost like a comical setup with the uh, where it shows where the red line is. It has this almost dial going around the speedometer, the decometer, and then the red line kind of drops outside as a almost a framing for the tachometer. I've never seen an integration like that, and I wasn't even aware that that existed until I just saw it right now. <laughs> All right, guys, we are driving the E60 M5. Interesting gear shifts. So this is a sequential manual, meaning that it's underneath everything, it's a manual transmission. It's just an automated manual, which makes it, it's not a dual clutch, it makes it maybe a little bit jerky in slow speeds, but I have it in 500 settings, so we have all the horsepower available from the V10, and just think about that. Woo! Whoa! These shifts are just ferocious. I mean, you get kicked in the back with this sequential manual. You still have the delay of what would be like a clutch and it really kicks you in the back. It works definitely better when you rev it a lot and just go full throttle with the car. But when you drive slow, it's a little bit jerky, but it kind of adds to the, I guess, to the charm of this generation E60. We still have 500 horsepower up front, which is nuts to think about in a luxury sedan like this is. Downshift sounds fantastic. Yeah, these shifts, I've never experienced a, a, a gearbox like this. Very unique and interesting uh, way of shifting. Downshifts are feel a lot quicker than upshifts for sure and also a lot smoother. So it's like you go and then you shift and then you wait and then boom, the shift comes in. But there is no denying that it sounds absolutely fantastic. The thing is, would you rather have the smooth, classy rumble of the E39 V8? Or would you have this howling exhaust of the V10? I'm not sure. If I were to buy one of these cars, I just, I, I can't not say, I can't say no to the, to the E39. It's just my personal favorite M5 of all time. But this is still very entertaining to drive. <laughs> this gearbox is just way too funny to handle in manual transmission. What a machine this is. You know, even with all the uh, reliability issues that this uh, E60 generation has, specifically with the M5, what makes it special is that this is the only time we're gonna have a V10 in a uh, in an m5 and i think that's what makes it special and that's my review of the bmw e60 m5 if you enjoyed this type of videos make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel i really appreciate you and thanks to european auto house for letting me review this car i'm gonna link their full inventory down in the description thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video